want to explain to you a little bit the waveforms that you'll find in the motor. So here are five positions of the magnets in the rotor as they approach the iron core of the stator windings. So as the magnet approaches, it induces, because the south pole is facing towards the core, uh, you get a negative voltage induced that then uh, once it reaches the center of alignment it flips to a positive one and this is sort of like the um, counter electromotic force that is uh, induced in the stator windings it's the generator output almost of these uh, coils um, and so the motor is running and I have a scope attached across the coils and this is also what you see you see the negative voltage and then the positive voltage with of course our pulse over it and uh, you see very lightly here the um, large negative voltage spike from the collapsing magnetic field when the, at the end of this straight line that's where the pulse ends and that's when the magnetic field collapses and you see that in this in this spike it's not super visible on this scope but anyways um, so let me just um, pull the power uh, cable out of the out of the Arduino that will stop the transistor from pulsing and then it's when we can really uh, see just the counter electromotive force in the coils. There we go. Oh, it's slowing down. Let me just let me just work this a bit. So you see uh, the top part is clipped off at the moment because apparently in my coil the the um, positive wave is goes higher than the uh, supply voltage so the there's more than 12 voltage volts induced in my coil windings b by the rotating uh, magnets so that's uh, that's something pretty cool so you see now you see the now that the rotor has slowed down less voltage uh, is induced and so now you see the perfectly that that wave that I, that I drew here. So that's this wave is purely what you would see in the generator windings if you would add a generator coil to this circuit. And this is what limits the current input. So you have the 12 volts coming from the supply battery. And then you have this induced voltage. And that is what limits the current flow in the windings. So if this induced voltage is almost 12 volts and your battery is 12.62 in my case that means hardly any current will flow in the winding. So that's why Robert Adams says the motor is most efficient when the counter electromotive force is almost equal to the supply voltage. And in my case somehow the counter electromotive force seems to exceed the supply voltage. I connected here a uh, 1 ohm 50 watt precision resistor and that will allow us to measure the current waveform so let's uh, give that a try so I placed the scope across the resistor now coming from the positive battery lead and that allows us to see the current waveform on the scope as you can see there's a little hill because it uh, takes a little while for the inductor to uh, soak up all that current but then watch as I change the duty cycle or the pulse uh, position now we're pulsing before the center now we're pulsing after the center and you see how the current waveform changes as I twist the point of where we start the pulse there's a big difference huh? So this is after alignment, way after alignment, and this is before alignment. And so you see the current waveform has a totally different shape. And this is a very rough uh, image I created, but you sort of see the counter electromotive force, and this is our pulse. And so the current waveform will be this, the difference between the back EMF the, or the counter electromotive force and the pulse. So you see at this point 
hardly any current will flow because the counter EMF is almost equal to the pulse voltage. However, here a lot of voltage or a lot of current will flow actually. So that's uh, just something interesting about these waves, and uh, just just shows you how you can measure uh, some things in your uh, in your motor. Now next, let's see how fast we can make this thing spin. I want to do a little speed test with this motor, so I set the duty cycle to um, 40 percent, and you see the motor is spinning at about 800 RPM with just six six volts of input. So um, it's drawing about 25 milliamps. So uh, let's uh, see what happens. But you can see that even with six volts, you're able to spin this motor at about 800 RPM. So that's uh, pretty good. So uh, what if I start to crank the voltage up? Let's go to 13. You see the current draw goes up. And then it starts going down again as um, voltage as the RPM increases and that's there's nothing magical about that it just has to do with this induced voltage that increases as the motor speeds up and then so the difference between that induced voltage and the pulse voltage shrinks and so less current is able to flow so the faster the rotor spins the less current will be drawn so it's very uh, basic motor stuff, nothing magical about it. So at 13 volts we're currently drawing 50, 45 milliamps and we're going at about 1600 RPM but we're still uh, still climbing. This motor doesn't have a ton of torque so it takes it a long time for it to reach its top speed. So uh, just to speed things up uh, I'll just crank up the volume to 24. Do you hear it speeding up? Yes. The current draw is going down. Now we're at 2400 RPM and climbing fast. 2470, 80, See the you now it's 60 65 milliamps draw. Started off at 13 or uh, 130 milliamps. So um, that's just the effect of the counter EMF. Reaching 2700 RPM now. Still climbing. Let's just crank it up a bit more. This is about the limit which I've tested it, so this is as far as I want to go. 3200 RPM, 3300 almost. So, what just happened uh, is pretty scary actually because, um, yeah, the rotor spun so fast. And I hadn't fixed the magnets in securely enough, apparently, and so they just the edge broke off, and the magnets just launched out, and they broke off 
my stand for my um, hall sensor and there are magnets everywhere there's one here there's one over there there's one on the ground here so that was very dangerous so that just shows you how careful you have to be with this kind of stuff always wear safety goggles even though I wasn't which was stupid so <coughs> yeah this shook me pretty badly because um, I was lucky they launched at the wall and not at me but um, yeah this thing was spinning at 3300 rpm so there was quite a lot of force behind those magnets um, which you can tell because they've really like you know chipped off by hitting the wall so hard and it, it yeah it broke this thing clean off as well so yeah be careful guys <laughs> I guess I'll have to build a new rotor. Uh, I was gonna do that anyways because yeah I spent a good amount of money uh, and time getting these um, these flywheels uh, made but turns out Robert Adams rotor was partly made of foam because he wanted them to be as light as possible so I think I went a bit overboard here with this thick uh, flywheel so uh, I was I, and plus you see these magnets they're about 20 millimeters wide but 10 millimeters high and so I ordered some square ones that are 2 by 2 millimeters uh, that's also closer to what Robert Adams himself was using and so hopefully that will uh, that will help and I will 3d print the rotor so it will be nice and light and I'll be sure to use proper glue and uh, adhesives this time because uh, this, uh, this was scary stuff. Cool, so uh, to be continued.